Hello. Welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer here on this uh, Saturday of the 13th week of Ordinary Time. And uh, it's July 6th and the feast day today of St. Maria Goretti. Uh, canonized the saint just uh, about the same time I was born. So she hasn't been a saint all that long. Okay, <laughs> 1950, she was canonized a saint. Maria was uh, 12 years old when she met her death. Okay, she was a young girl, 12, uh, poor family. She would do domestic work with her mom, help out cleaning houses and whatnot and just just was, uh, was just an innocent little child and she was attacked by a man in the neighborhood a young man in the neighborhood who had uh, designs on raping her but she would not let that occur rather than lose her purity she died And as horrific as that is, there are so many silver linings. And it's the truth with most, if not all, of our martyrs. Every martyr in the history of the church serves as inspiration to others. We can look at Jesus himself on the cross and see... Um, you know, the man who pierced the side of Jesus, St. Longinus, yes, St. Longinus, the man who pierced the side of Jesus that ultimately was the final blow in Christ's passion. The blood in the water that poured from that wounded side splashed all over this Roman centurion and from that moment he realized who that was in front of him on the cross his life changed he converted he became a Christian he became a saint preaching Jesus as God Our Holy Father, John Paul II, was shot. Someone tried to kill him. But by the grace of God and the, the hand of our Blessed Mother guiding the bullet as he gives credit to, John Paul II said that one hand pulled the trigger and another hand guided the bullet. Talking about our Blessed Mother recognizing um, her hand in saving his life. But when John Paul II recovered from his wound, got out of the hospital, one of his first stops was to the prison where this man was being held, sat, talked with the man, and forgave him. Jesus on the cross, the same thing. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This young lady, in her dying words to her mother, professed her forgiveness for the man who did this to her. The man was in prison, understood the wrong he had done, came to a conversion himself, and upon his release from the prison, he went to Maria's mother and begged her forgiveness for having killed her daughter. Maria's mother said to the man, my daughter has forgiven you. Our Lord has forgiven you. Who am I? To withhold forgiveness 
and not only did she forgive him, but she gave him a home. They took care of each other for the rest of their lives. He was there when she was beatified. Her mother was present at her canonization. There's even talk that this man, who was the murderer, might himself be canonized a saint. Now that's remarkable to think about. Look at St. Paul, though, implicit in so many deaths of the early Christians, a saint. All of us have histories. All of us have a past with darkness and sinfulness. But we're called to forgive. We're called to be mercy. A prayer we're going to pray together in a few minutes. Those are Jesus' teachings, his words for this perfect prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hard, yes, but that's what we're called to. It's a higher plane that we as followers of Jesus must live on. We have to live on a higher plane. We have to elevate our lives to be more like his. We have to lift our own lowly selves up with the help of God's grace to be merciful, to be forgiving, to be compassionate, to love our enemies. So today as we celebrate this beautiful feast of this beautiful little innocent girl <coughs> who went to her death <coughs> rather than defile her purity. We have to purify ourselves. We have to be pleasing to God. All the martyrs, as they were dying, they could see where they were heading. They could see the promised land. And that's where they enjoy eternity now. And so I too desire to be in the Holy Land, the, the, the kingdom of heaven. I desire to be with our Lord at the end of my days. And the only way to do that is to emulate our Lord and his saints, to be a saint ourselves, to be someone who lives mercy, who gives mercy, who harbors no grudges, who holds no contempt for anyone, but is at peace with his neighbors, his family, and his God. Let us pray our evening prayer on this feast of St. Maria Goretti. Thank her for ins her inspiration And we ask that she intercedes for us today on her feast day to give us the strength and the courage we need to be like her, to be like our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance, Lord. Make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your word, O Lord, is the lantern to light our way. Alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. I have sworn and have 
made up my mind to obey your decrees. Lord, I am deeply afflicted. By your word, give me life. Accept, Lord, the homage of my lips and teach me your decrees. Though I carry my life in my hands, I remember your law. Though the wicked try to ensnare me, I do not stray from your precepts. Your will is my heritage forever, the joy of my heart. I set myself to carry out your will in fullness forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your word, Father, be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path so that we may understand what you wish to teach us and follow the path your light marks out for us. Your word, O Lord, is the lantern to light our way. Alleluia. When I see your face, O Lord, I shall know the fullness of joy. Alleluia. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. He has put into my heart a marvelous love for the faithful ones who dwell in his land. Those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Never will I offer their offerings of blood. Never will I take their name upon my lips. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. The lot marked out for me is my delight. Welcome indeed the heritage that falls to me. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, uphold those who hope in you, and give us your counsel, so that we may know the joy of your resurrection, and deserve to be among the saints at your right hand. When I see your face, O Lord, I shall know the fullness of joy. Alleluia. Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. Alleluia. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in our prayer for you, because we have heard <coughs> of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you bear toward all the saints. Moved as you are by the hope held in store for you in heaven, you heard of this hope through the message of truth, the gospel, which has come to you 
has borne fruit and has continued to grow in your midst as it has everywhere in the world. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. His splendor reaches far beyond the heavens. May the name of the Lord be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. My yoke is easy and my burden light, says the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My yoke is easy and my burden light, says the Lord. God aids and protects the people he has chosen for his inheritance. Let us give thanks to him and proclaim his goodness. Lord, we trust in you. We pray for Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our bishop. Protect them in your goodness, and in your goodness make them holy. Lord, we trust in you. May the sick feel their companionship with the suffering Christ, and know that they will enjoy his eternal consolation. Lord, we trust in you. In your goodness, have compassion on the homeless. Help them to find proper housing. Lord, we trust in you. In your goodness, give and preserve the fruits of the earth so that each day there may be bread enough for all. Lord, we trust in you. Graciously protect our nation from evil that it may prosper in your peace. Lord, we trust in you. Lord, you attend the dying of, with great mercy. Grant them an eternal dwelling. Lord, we trust in you. Let us conclude our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, through the obedience of Jesus, your servant and your son, you raised a fallen world. Free us from sin and bring us the joy that lasts forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A great night, everyone, and a blessed Sunday to you all tomorrow. Rest well.